What's up you guys? It's Meryl going around for my very very first travel vlog. For this video, I will be showing you some of the free things you can do in London. And yeah, I'm taking you with me. I started my day at the Green Park and if you actually walk through the park, you'll end up at the Buckingham Palace. Fun fact! If it's the Union Jack on the pole, that means the Queen is not in that palace. If it's the Royal Standard, then the Queen is inside the residence. So I know you guys can see that. Behind me is actually the Buckingham Palace. And in front of me is the Victoria Memorial. Instant tip, use the barrier to cover other tourists in front of the palace and take the photo from below like this. The Buckingham Palace is open to the public from July to September every year. It's not free, but make sure to book in advance if you are interested. Even if going inside the Buckingham Palace is not free, you can still watch the changing of the guards. So I'm standing in St. James Park. I'm actually still a bit shy to walk and actually vlog, but you can do the birdcage walk in this park because they actually take care of the birds here. If we're lucky, we can see the pelicans, but if not, I will try to put um, an old video with this vlog, so. They have signs all over the park about the different kinds of birds you may find. If you cross the small bridge across the pond, you'll get a glimpse of the London Eye. This is normally where I found the ambassador's pelicans, but they were not in the area. So here's an old video of the pelicans. Fun fact, the first pelicans were a gift from a Russian ambassador in 1664. If you walk from St. James Park to Westminster Abbey, you'll see the Big Ben and a lot of telephone booths. Institute, take a photo with the telephone booth and Big Ben from Great George Street for the ultimate London photo. Unfortunately, Big Ben is under restoration until 2021. So I'm actually standing in front of Westminster Abbey right now. If the name sounds familiar, it's because Prince William and Kate Middleton tied the knot here. You can also get in the Westminster Abbey, however, it's not free. So I'm currently standing at the Parliament Garden Square. I think it's quite noisy, but... Um, there's Big Ben and you can also see the House of Parliament over there. So this is a good place to actually take pictures. And aside from that, you see other statues like Winston Churchill over there and Nelson Mandela and other important people. If you continue to the Westminster Bridge, you can get a good view of the London Eye. Insta tip, you can pose with the London Eye and River of Thames by taking a picture from the Westminster Bridge, like this. However, if it's too crowded, you can also take a picture from the Victoria Embankment. From Westminster Station, I took the District Line to Tower Hill. So behind me is the Tower of London. I hope you can see that. And over here, you can also see the shard. This is the Tower of London. From outside, it's obvious that it's a historical castle or fortress. You can also do tours at the Tower of London, but they're not free. You can see the Crown Jewels collection in the Tower of London for a price. From the Tower of London, you can walk on the Tower Bridge. You can get a nice view of the City Hall that resembles an egg, and the Shard that resembles, um... I don't know, I guess use your imagination! <laughs> So I just got down from the Tower Bridge and right now I'm in front of the City Hall and the reason why I'm here is to show you a good spot to take pictures with the Tower Bridge. Insta tip, you can sit down on the barrier in front of the City Hall to take a picture with the Tower Bridge like this. Iconic buildings I've already mentioned in this video are only free if you view or take pictures from the outside. If you want to explore what's inside, you might have to pay a ticket. But don't worry, it's still worth seeing from the outside, especially if you have limited budget or time. I'm heading out today to show you my favorite museums in London and the best part about them is that you can really get in for free. So we're in 
inside the British Museum right now and we will be exploring the Egyptian and Greek parts of the museum. This is actually my favorite museum in the world. The British Museum houses more than 100,000 Egyptian antiquities, the largest collection outside Egypt. The Egyptian antiquities include mummies, tombs, statues, sculptures, obelisks, and more. Fun fact! The Rosetta Stone is one of the important pieces in the British Museum. It's described as the key to the decipherment of hieroglyphs. Greece Department also houses classical antiquities like columns, monuments, tombs, and a lot more. A highlight in this department of the museum is the Parthenon marbles, which were parts of the Temple of Parthenon. So behind me is the Trafalgar Square, and in front of me is the National Gallery, and that's our second museum of the day. The National Gallery houses paintings from famous painters including Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Canaletto, Pizarro, Cezanne, Monet, Picasso, Matisse, Klimt, and Van Gogh. Fun fact! Van Gogh made many versions of the sunflowers. The one in the National Gallery is the fourth version of his second series of sunflowers, and the repetition of this is in the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. The Covent Garden is also a nice place to visit. They have wagons with colorful flowers all around and the colors inside are nice. If you go here in the morning, you will see a lot of fun street shows. You can walk to the Royal Opera House from the Covent Garden and in front of that is the ballerina statue. Instatip! The area with the telephone booths lined up at Broadcourt is also a good place to take your Instagram photo. Sky Garden today and I was really lucky with the weather. It's very, very sunny, so I am going to show you the view. At the top floor of 20 Fenchurch Street, they have a beautifully landscaped indoor garden. The Sky Garden has a 360-degree breathtaking view of London. Aside from that, there is a brasserie, a bar, and a restaurant where you can enjoy pastries, drink coffee, or even sip on a cocktail. So we're in Brick Lane right now and we're exploring East London Street Art. <laughs> if you want to experience London's alternative culture, then explore the East London Street Art. Fun fact! Banksy, the famous street artist slash political activist, has graffitis around Shoreditch. Banksy's identity remains a mystery. You can start walking from Brick Lane and follow the painted walls until the Shoreditch High Street. Instatip, pose with your favorite graffiti. So those are some of the free things you can do in London and there is a lot more. If you like this video, I really hope you subscribe and click the bell button down below. And yeah, I guess thank you for watching and see you around!